Turn to the various proposed final form. The industry had less than a week to review and respond to the final form that will further the document process. We ask the authority to delay the, their board hearing today for at least 30 days. We continue to have problems with the lease situation that has been excluded from the regulations, including drivers that own their own vehicles. We, we were estimating that at least 80% of the drivers own their own vehicles, and there's nowhere in Act 94, 2004 about Dove, Dove leases, and there's nowhere in the regulations about Dove leases, and we think that's very important. And um, we, the maximum lease caps, because the meters are regulated, we feel that the maximum lease caps needs to be in there, even though our generation of drivers might know that it, to look to Act 94 for future generations, you know, will have no idea. And um, we believe the PPA should follow the same procedure as the PUC and allowing driver certificates to be two years instead of one year. Um, the authority are still, is, still, is still seeking to violate drivers' due process when they're accused of a crime, they're not convicted. You know, so like in my case, I, you know, it took two years to go to court. I was found not guilty. How was I supposed to make a living in two years if I was unable to drive? It's, you know, we think that's very important. The authority is still not clear, um, not clear to their annual fees and renewal structure and how the industry will have a voice. And every year y'all come up with your budget, we, we want a, a bigger voice in, in fees because it affects, it, it impacts our lives. Every time you raise a fee on us, it takes money from our families. Two minutes. Okay. The authority still seeks to um, monitor moving violations and parking tickets, which are out of their scope according to Act 94, 2004. The authority has not removed the mileage restrictions of any kind from the regulations that violate both Act 94 and the recommendations from Eric, Representative Cohen, and Representative Thomas. The authority has not properly addressed the credit card situation that continue to cause problems. So many problems, in fact, the authority has not officially gone live with the contract after being in the cast for over three years. Both UTWA and ERG recommended that the authority bring other vendors in to reduce the 5% drivers are charged. Most concerning about, about this rush here today is the fines was just put in. They weren't put in with the proposed regulations, and these fines are still among the highest in the nations, and we would like to get the fines lowered and that progressive one, two, three step that affects drivers because the medallion owners are just going to pass the fines on to the drivers anyway. That's and um, so, yeah, yeah, so one driver get a ticket for a ball tire for, for 500 or 350, and the second driver for the medallion owner get a ticket, he got to pay 750. It's unfair. Okay, that's know. time's up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blunt. All Excuse right. Mr. Chair, just for the record, you mentioned the fee schedule. If the fine schedule is not before the board today, <clears throat> that's just in a proposed comment stage, so there's going to be time to review that and amend it. That's not before the board today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mark Klein with Clean Energy. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Brief introduction, my name is Mark Klein. I'm a Vice President at Clean Energy Fuels. Clean Energy is the largest provider of natural gas fuel for transportation in North America, a global leader in expanding natural gas fuel uh, vehicle market. It has operations in CNG and LNG fueling stations with more than 230 stations in North America, construction and operation of CNG facilities, biomethane production, vehicle conversion, and compressor technology. Natural gas fuel for transportation is cleaner, cheaper, abundant, and all-American. Using domestic natural gas fuel in the taxicab and for hire industries will support President Obama's goal of ending our dependence on foreign oil imports, will enhance U.S. energy security policies, and will support the economy here in Pennsylvania. Just yesterday, a report was released that noted 156,000 people in Pennsylvania will be employed this year in the natural gas industry. Notably, natural gas fuel for transportation is selling at about $1.50 less per gallon than gasoline. So people who pay for fuel, like taxi cab drivers and operators, like natural gas vehicles because it saves them money. In fact, the California Air Resources Board has determined that natural gas vehicles reduce greenhouse gas emissions by up to 30% over their gasoline counterparts. So CNG taxis will immediately benefit Philadelphia's air quality. 
In order to incentivize Philadelphia's taxicab owners and drivers to quickly transform and transition their vehicles to natural gas, the Philadelphia Parking Authority should consider programs which economically benefit the owners and drivers of such cabs. For example, the Philadelphia Parking Authority could consider adopting, most importantly, an increased vehicle age and mileage life for natural gas taxicabs. We could also work to uh, in install front of the line privileges at the airport and reduce trip fees at the airport. Simply put, incentive programs supported by the PPA should be considered to promote a cleaner taxi cab fleet. Critically, lower cost natural gas fuel can act as a hedge against runaway gasoline prices. If gasoline prices increase to $5 a gallon or $6 a gallon, a fuel surcharge on the riding public will unfairly force the burden of costly gasoline onto the citizens of Philadelphia and tourists visiting this great city. An extra two years of vehicle age life for natural gas taxi cabs, which is what they have in Chicago right now, will importantly assist the economics for taxi cab owners and drivers. Additionally, Section 1017.5B11, which calls for taxi cab trunk size to be able to hold a wheelchair, should be modified so that natural gas taxi cabs, which have fuel tanks in the trunk, should be excluded from that section. That said, however, a purpose-built CNG wheelchair accessible taxi cab, like the new CNG MV1, should be granted the longest vehicle age life to encourage both wheelchair accessible and natural gas taxi cabs. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Fine. Very interesting. Okay, next, uh, Linda Chaidu. Chaidu. Sorry, Yellen. Sorry. Yellen, my husband. For how many years do you still can't pronounce his name? I just call him Phil. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Linda Jagiella. I am with Aries Transportation. Um, we operate a for hire luxury transportation service in Southampton and Bucks County. Um, I'll be representing my company while my husband will speak um, on behalf of the Philadelphia Regional Limousine Association. I'm disappointed that the Philadelphia Parking Authority um, took little of our comments into the provisions. It's been, it's been, regard to the limousine portion. Um, we believe that if these regulations are instituted in the current form, more of our colleagues will either go out of business, close their doors, or move to neighboring states. As presented, out-of-state carriers have an advantage over Pennsylvania-based operators. Philadelphia has a world-class convention center, yet only 16 conventions are planned over the next 12 months. Center City Hotel daily rates, as reported in the Philadelphia Inquirer this weekend, are among the lowest in comparable cities. Yet the rate transportation operators will be paying to the PPA are not comparable to the level of business in Philadelphia. Should a large convention come to Philadelphia, I do not believe that the level of service will be available to um, meet that demand and it will be greatly diminished. Despite one of the highest unemployment rates in ever, um, companies continue to be challenged to hire chauffeurs, especially new chauffeurs who are not willing to take the time or spend the money to get a new PPA license. Those who have a license and maybe a marginal chauffeur hop from company to company. Quality individuals are not entering this profession. Large corporations are tightening their budgets and they're asking us, the vendors, to make price concessions. <coughs> Small operators do not have the ability to make these concessions and are regularly losing corporate accounts. These regulations are skewed toward larger operators. In other cities, the cost to operate and the fine structures are not so large to create a deterrent for providing service in the city. Large and small operators are on an equal playing ground in other cities. The ruthless efficiency and constant media attention and an A&E television program spotlighting the Philadelphia Parking Authority in a negative manner and continues to be a detriment to the tourism, which is a large market for the chauffeur transportation industry. Although it has been said that any regulated body would have a problem and animosity toward its regulators, I disagree with this statement. Other world-class cities, such as Atlanta, foster good working relationships with the regulators who include them in the rulemaking process. We embrace the fair and equitable regulations, but we do not put um, the extreme hardships on those who are regulated. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Philip Jagiella. 
All right, fine. Philip Jagiella, you're right. And we've known each other for a long time. I'm certain you've called me something other than Philip, but it's always been professional. Not when the camera's on, anyway. That's correct, not when the camera's on. Cameras do come on and cameras do go off in these executive sessions, and it's always a fascinating uh, opportunity to take and observe. But nevertheless, I do thank this opportunity to come before this board. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow colleagues, thank you for joining us here today. We as a professional association have, a long, have long demonstrated our ability and desire to participate in a fair and equitable regulatory environment. We have a history of this with the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission for over, over 30 years of our existence as a professional association. The format and opportunity for the industry to participate in the rulemaking process has been in place with the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission for over 50 years. Our dilemma has been the dual regulatory environment since 2005 when the Philadelphia Parking Authority was granted the enforcement of regulations. In itself, we have no problem with the enforcement and we continue to embrace the Philadelphia Parking Authority doing that particular responsibility. The truism here is we need to have the enforcement of fair, equitable, properly formulated and promulgated regulations. Executive De Director Vince Fennerty himself recognized that that has not been the case by this entity. And in turn, after operating in six years in a non-commonwealth, uh, as they are, agency environment, has now has to move the clock hands backwards to take and do it as the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission has a commonwealth agency. Thank you for bringing that to our attention, Director Fennerty. As a state agency, we do in fact ask you to take and follow those rules and regulations. We're glad to see that you're doing that at this particular point in time. Yes, it's been troublesome and burdensome to us both financially, um, time-wise, equitably, to take and come against an agency that has turned their shoulder to those things in the past, but we're glad that you're stepping forward to do that now. That's too much. No explanation has been given to why the changes that we made from the limousine industry in the proposed regulations were really given consideration as they have been in other parts of those regulations from what we have read. This gives the appearance that the um, Philadelphia Parking Authority did not consider the industry input. And sometimes they say perception is reality. As such, I would consider this board to move that these regulations not go forward in their current form, give the industry the proper audience that they are entitled to and listen to us as an industry, as the public, and give it your full consideration before moving that the next step. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Uh, Ina Friedman, President of Pennsylvania Tax yeah. Association. I'm not Ina Friedman, but... Uh, <laughs> We, Ina and Alex Friedman have asked me to speak on their behalf since I've been representing them. Um, my name is David Temple. Uh, I represent the Pennsylvania Taxi Association, uh, which is, a, we have approximately a thousand taxi cab medallion owners that are on board with uh, our representation regarding the regulations to the authority. Um, in our initial submission to the authority regarding the initial comments, we concentrated on only those issues that were important. We recognized the authority's responsibility to regulate, and we didn't comment on a majority of the regulations. We commented only on those ones that, would, that were detrimental to our business and would affect us tremendously economically or operationally. 